five. I hope you've all had a really good weekend. Hope you got on last week with our multiplication and division. Remember, as ever, if you're struggling with anything, please post on the blog or email our email address, which all of you should have by now. Before we move on, I'm just going to go through the challenge that I set for you last week. As you can see, this is last week's challenge. There are lots of possible answers that you could have come up with, starting from 129 and continuing through to 939. Hopefully you can look at those and spot a little bit of a pattern. There was one of you that have sent one of the solutions in, so well done to you. In Miss Howship's class, the rest of you, I hope you're having a go at these challenges. If you are, remember to post them on your blogs or email the email address. This week our focus is on fractions, so that's what we're going to start off thinking about. What actually is a fraction? Now we say that a fraction is a part of a whole. So the first little challenge I want you to do is pause the video and go around or make a list or a mind map of as many things you can think of in real life where you would see a fraction. What could you say you could find a part of a whole? Good luck! Hopefully you found loads of things around your house. We could say anything, part of a chocolate bar, pizza, money, loads and loads of things we can say is a part of a whole. You can send me those lists on the blog or on the class email address. Can't wait to see what you can up with. So, let's start off with looking at a fraction. This fraction is called a quarter. And hopefully we remember that a fraction is made up of two parts. We have this part here at the bottom, which is called our denominator, okay? And this bit, our numerator. So if I was to draw this as a bar, it could be a chocolate bar, it could be anything, okay? Here's my whole, the whole chocolate bar. Remember, a fraction is a part of that whole. So... My bottom number, my denominator, is how many parts my whole is split into, how many it's broken into. The top number, my numerator, is how many parts of that whole I have got. So it's split equally, which is key, into four, but my numerator says that I've got one out of the four pieces. So one quarter should look like this. Okay, your turn. I want you to pause the video and I want you to draw me what this would look like. So our fraction is three fifths. So draw that out for me, pause the video and then we'll go through it. So hopefully you should have a bar with five equal pieces and that's the part that makes up our denominator. And then you should have shaded in your three parts and that's the part that makes up our numerator. So yours should look something like this. What's important for us to remember is that this is a part of my whole. So what I've got missing is two-fifths. There's two-fifths missing out of my whole. I've got three. If I had all of the parts shaded, I would say I would have five-fifths, which is the same, or five parts out of five, which is the same as having one whole. If I've got all of these pieces, then it's the same as eating the full piece of the chocolate bar. So it's important to remember. We're now going to think about the word equivalent, shown by the equal sign, which means equal to or the same as. Whatever is either side of that equal sign, it has exactly the same value. So here we have a half. So my bar is split equally into two parts, that's my denominator, and I have one of them, so we call it a half. I want to know how many quarters, that's when it's split into four, is exactly the same as having one half. So with my bars, I need to split these now equally into four pieces. So I can do that easily by splitting each of these into two. I've now got four pieces, that's my denominator. If I look above, how many pieces is exactly the same as having one half? I can see there, because my bars are the same size, that two pieces of four is the same as having one piece of two, or one half. So we can say that one half 
is equivalent to, it's exactly the same as having two quarters. Those fractions are equal. Now I can also do this mathematically without drawing it, because I can see that my denominator has been times by two, and I can also see that my numerator has been times by two. They've both been multiplied by the same thing. So we can see that here. My bar has been split into twice as many pieces, and I've got twice as many pieces as two. However, they are exactly the same amount because my pieces are smaller. Now it's your turn. I want you to have a go at drawing four fifths showing me in a bar. And I want you to show me how many tenths is the same as equal to four fifths. I want you to have a go at drawing it in a bar and have a go at showing me the fractions as well. Remember, which I've done here, your bars need to be the same size. That's really key. So for four fifths, you should have your whole bar split into five equal parts because that's my denominator. My numerator tells me that I've got four out of those five pieces. So we can shade four of those five in. So there's my first fraction. But I wanted to know if it was how many tenths it was equal to. So I've got five pieces here, and I need ten. So I need to split each bar into two. And then I'm going to have ten pieces. Okay? So my denominator is ten. So how many fifths is that equal to? I can draw a little line down here to give me an idea, so hopefully that's accurate. And we should have shaded eight pieces in. So we should have eight tenths is equal to four fifths. And we can do that here by writing it down. Four fifths is equal to how many tenths? We times the denominator by two. We had twice as many pieces, and so we do the same for the numerator, which gives me 8 tenths. We're going to have a go now at creating equivalent fractions without drawing them. If it helps you to draw it, then please do that, but I'm not going to for this one. So my fraction is 3 quarters. Remember when my denominator is a 4, it's a quarter. And I want to know how many twelfths it is the same as. So first of all, I'm going to think about what have I done to the 4 to the denominator to get to 12. So hopefully we know that that is times by 3. When we're making equivalent fractions, our golden rule is whatever you multiply or divide your denominator by, you must do the same to your numerator. So that must mean that I need to times it by 3. 3 times 3 gives me 9. Now it's time for you to pause again. I want you to have a go at doing this one. So my fraction is two fifths. I want to know how many fifteenths is equal to that. So how many fifteenths is the same as two fifths? Off you go. So starting off with our denominator, I've got fifths. Thinking about what did I do to my fifths in order to get to fifteen? We should know that I've times that by three. Let's think about that. Five times three is fifteen. Five, ten, fifteen. So then, whatever we do to our denominator, whatever we multiply by, then we need to multiply by the same number for our numerator. So we times that by 3. So 2 times by 3 should give me 6. So we can say that 2 fifths is the same as 6 fifteenths. That concludes today's maths video. Before you go, I've got two challenges for you. The first is from Ringo. He said that fractions can be easily simplified if they're even. So you can only simplify them if they're even by just keep halving the numerator and the denominator. Is that true? I want to know why. Sit from him. Today's maths activities, you've got two that are on purple mash, and there's another superstar challenge coming up on the video for you. Remember, any solutions or questions that you have, post them on the blog or email our year five email address.